cherry. Another cherry. Impractical Jokers is one of my absolute favourite TV shows of all time. I look at the show almost as a source of light that our Lord and Saviour sent down to us so that we wouldn't lose hope while living in this dreadful, sinful world. It is honestly the greatest and funniest piece of media that I have ever had the honour of witnessing with my own two eyes. It's also a show that everyone, no matter your age or who you are, can sit down, watch and enjoy and it'll give you a little giggle. I love the show so much that I even named my entire channel after it. Like, that's how iconic it truly is. So in today's video I want to honour the Impractical Jokers by going through their iconic show as well as their godlike impact on our society. So before we get into the actual premise of the TV show and like all of that nonsense, I thought it would be cute to go through how the show actually came to be. This show actually has one of the most wholesome starts to a show that I've ever held in my entire life. Now the show stars the absolute icons that are Sal Volcano, Brian Quinn who goes by Q on the show, James Murray who goes by Ma on the show and of course Joe Gatto. Now the icons first met each other during high school in 1990 and became homies soon after. Now they met in religious studies which I think is so ironic since they would go on to create an absolute godsend of a TV show. However, in 1999, they went on to establish their own comedy improv group, which they called The Tender Loins. Which, just a side note, right, like, that is the most iconic and coolest name that I've ever heard for a group of people in my entire life. The Tender Loins. It's just, it's just such an iconic name. Now, the group actually had other members in it that weren't just the four guys that we all know and stand today, but they left over the years due to different kind of personal reasons and stuff like that. The Tender Loins would do live comedy performances and in 2006 the group began to film giggle worthy sketches and would post them to YouTube. We want some penis! Hey, we want some gay sex! The sketches on YouTube gave the group a huge amount of success and even resulted in them winning a competition. Now this competition was called It's Your Show and they actually won a cash prize of $100,000 for their sketch Time Fugs. They're just so iconic, like I can't even. Your faves could never. Now because of the success of their sketches and the fact they'd won this competition, the Tender Loins as a group started to make a name for themselves within the comedy world and this got the attention of Spike TV. Now Spike TV originally signed the guys on to create a TV show, however after creating the pilot for the TV show, Spike TV actually passed on it, they made the biggest oopsie in their entire lives and they passed on the godsend that would have been in Practical Jokers, the biggest L in history, I can't lie. You disgust me. You disgust everyone. Anyway, th these TV studios must get so many ideas coming into them and it's just so crazy to think like you just never know if you pass on one, it'll go on to be an absolute phenomenon. So like they will let you know, right? But at the same time, if this man walked into my office, I would be like, oh, absolutely, so you're signed. You can have as many episodes as you want. However, this experience for the guys wasn't all bad as a second version of this pilot that they'd created for Spike TV was selected for the New York Television Festival in 2009. However, Spike TV weren't the only TV studio that were interested in the Tenderloin as True TV also were very interested in signing the guys on to create their own TV show and in April of 2011 we as a society were truly blessed by True TV as they announced that our icons were going to get their own TV show after all. We were informed that the TV show would be called Impractical Jokers and the first episode aired on December 15th 2011. A truly god worthy day. Now, now that we know how this iconic show came to be I think it's time to go through the premise of this absolute godsend of a TV show. The show sees the four guys competing in different challenges. So these challenges are usually them going out in public and just humiliating themselves. The person partaking in the challenge will have an earpiece in and will have to do whatever the other three guys tell them to do. So for example, if like Sal goes out to do the challenge and he has an earpiece in and the other three guys in the background are like hidden cameras and stuff over wherever it is they're doing the challenge and they will just tell him to do all sorts of silly shenanigans. And if he does them, then he passes the challenge. But if he doesn't, then he fails. Now, as I said, by nature, the challenges are to humiliate the person partaking in them, right? It's basically like public humiliation. It's to try and push the person who's partaking in a challenge to the point where they don't want to do it so that they can close the challenge. And I'll go and explain what that means a wee bit later on, right? But these challenges are always in public and the environments that they usually go for include like parks, supermarkets, cafes, just places they can go where there's a big group of people they can humiliate the homie in front of. 
some of my favourite ones come from them being in like focus groups as well. They do a lot of those where they get a small group of people. So what I just described very poorly probably is like an average challenge and how that goes. However, sometimes what happens is that they do challenges in pairs, either working against each other or working together. What I mean by like working together is that you'll get like, for example, like Sal and Ma and the two of them have to present like a PowerPoint or like a product to a group and they have to basically pass the challenge so the both of them can pass whereas if one of them fails because they're a pair like they'll both fail or what will happen is that you get a joker versus joker challenge where it'll be two people in the same challenge but they're working against each other instead of together but sometimes they do mix the challenges up so it's not always just them working by themselves it's a collective unit you know however if the joker participating in the challenge can't do what's been asked of them this will result in them getting a thumbs down on the leaderboard which in the impractical jokers canon is the worst thing you could ever have attached to your name because what this will result in by the end of the episode if you have the most thumbs down you have the most losses you will be tonight's big loser and you must be punished for that because you know we can't be losers in this world absolutely no way now this leads me on to the punishments now as i said the punishments will be done to the joker who has the most thumbs down at the end of that episode however sometimes they switch it up a wee bit and there's like a draw and two or more jokers could be forced to partake in a punishment at the same time i think one of the most infamous punishments that more than one person got made to partake in was when Sal and Ma were the big losers and all three of them had to get tattoos <laughs> with Sal's being the most iconic and probably the worst out of them all to be completely honest <laughs> like oh my god it's so iconic and we'll talk more about that tattoo later on in the video right but like it's just it's just so iconic oh my god now the punishments often but not always seem to be specifically picked for each guy as well so for example with Sal he's known for being like a really big germaphobe so his punishments usually see him surrounded by either trash or mud or dirt or whatever because they know that that'll get the best reaction out of him or one of the most iconic punishments is when Mar had to jump out the plane and the reason that he was made to do that and not somebody else is because he's deadly afraid of heights that's why they made him do that because it was targeted at him so like they're kind of picked out specifically for each guy but not always like that's not always the case but sometimes they are I don't know if I can explain this properly right and I really hope I can and if I can I'm really sorry I'm gonna put this reddit post up anyway just so that you guys if you want to pause and read it it basically will go over what I'm about to say but I overcomplicate stuff for myself so I'm probably gonna say this in the most weirdest way possible when I it's, it's probably really simple to say so a fun fact about the challenges and the punishments and the way that they're filmed for the show is that they're all filmed randomly and not in accordance with each other so a challenge and a punishment aren't filmed specifically for a certain episode they're just filmed randomly and then in the editing room they kind of just splice them all together and that's how you get an episode so what I mean by that is that the guys will film for hours and hours and will get lots of content of a certain challenge and there'll be many times like throughout this recording where use Ma as an example right where Ma will like pass the challenge and he'll do exactly what's been said and you know like he, you could justify him getting a thumbs up for that challenge however they can also edit it in a way because there's moments where he would have refused to do stuff when they're in the editing room they can look at the footage they've got and the punishments they've got and they can go well this punishment's really good so we, we can show the footage of him losing the challenge so we can show the footage of this punishment if that makes sense whereas they could also show the footage of him not failing the challenge so the show isn't scripted by any means but when editing they can make the decision to decide what joker will be the big loser for that episode but i don't know if that makes any sense but again i've put this reddit post up here so like hopefully that makes a bit more sense than i do i always see people asking as well how the impractical jokers always go about doing impractical jokes on people with it being noticed they've actually spoke about this in interviews and stuff where they've said that basically like while they're filming challenges a lot of people will like shout stuff at them or like people recognize them like, and sometimes it isn't even by the people that they're pranking it will be by other people in the street like shouting on them so that's why they do film hours and hours of content for like one challenge because they know that like they might get noticed or somebody might not want to be on tv they might say no like you know what i mean so it's like you never know but guys stop shouting at the impractical jokers if they're trying to play impractical jokes on people be so for real right now like oh my god i mean what the hell have we become excuse me 
Now, you may be wondering to yourself, who's been tonight's big loser the most? And my good sir, I thought it would be fun to go through each Joker, starting with the one who's been punished the least, to the one who's been punished the most, and I thought it would be cool to like, go through their best moments in the show and stuff, like their most meme-worthy moments and the most culturally impactful moments that they've had on the show. And I have absolutely missed out on some of these, by the way. So if you guys have any like favourite moments from the Jokers that I've left out, please let me know. But anyway, let's just get into it. Queen, suck it! <laughs> Now, Joe is the Joker with the least amount of punishments and has been tonight's big loser the least, which is iconic behaviour. You could also argue that he's also been in the least amount of seasons, but even when it was like equal, when they'd been in the same amount of seasons as each other, he still had the least. Joe has had some iconic moments within the challenges, including of course the running joke of him looking for Larry and Scoopsy Potatoes. However, some of Joe's most iconic punishments include one of my personal favourites, which is the one where he had to dress up as the genie in the fake play, and they just threw him about the stage, and he just had to thrash about the stage. It was so funny. That is one of my favourite punishments, like, of all time. Like, I literally watch that just for giggles all the time. It is so funny. Another one that I think is so funny is the punishment where they dressed him up as, like, a woman. They made him think that he was going to have to walk out in, like, a fashion show, and they, they basically lined up all these models, like, in front and behind him. And when he walked out to walk in this fashion show. He had to actually do a presentation in front of a group of professionals. Another favourite of mine is when he had to body slam himself into different tables in a restaurant to find the fake tables. Another personal favourite of mine is when he had to interview the biker gang and they were just not enjoying him. They just they did not vibe with Joe whatsoever and it was so funny. However, I think one of the most infamous and iconic punishments of all time is the one where Joe had to basically steal all the signed baseballs from the fans of the New York Mets right and a lot of the people that get these like same baseballs at the end of the game are like kids but his punishment was he was to go down and take the balls and catch them before the kids and the other fans could get them and the reason that I said that it was infamous is because there's a part of the punishment with basically this woman losing her tiny mind that Joe stole the baseball from one of her children and now this woman has been absolutely destroyed online right like people have absolutely tore her apart right and to be fair have you seen this man just stealing baseballs away for like kids you'd be a bit like right come on Man. But at the same time, it was like the way she screams at him is so uncomfortable to watch. Like, I can't even watch the full thing without genuinely wanting to like scratch my own eyes out. It is so uncomfortable. You can kind of see what she's coming for, like in a sense, as I said, right? However, if Joe Gatto tried to steal anything from me, I'd be incredibly, incredibly honoured. So got it! Now, Q has had some very iconic moments within the challenges, including when he called that guy moustache, you know, they put it in the intro and everything. It changed lives, it shook a whole nation. Ye yesterday was even crazy. I, I, uh, I, I pickled a uh, uh, human toe yesterday. However, I think after Mark Hugh has gotten the absolute most brutal punishments, right? Some of my favourites include when he had to reject a fake proposal in front of a huge crowd of baseball fans, but he couldn't justify it, he just had to keep saying no. When he had to continuously stop the Universal bus tour, and he had to stay on the bus the whole time as well. Like, oh my god, I could never. When he had to experience labour in front of a group of pregnant women. One of my favourite ones as well was when they made him stay in the car with those like singing puppets, and like they just sang the exact same song over and over and he had to do kind of like errands for the other jokers like he had to run after them and like go to the shops for them and get them food and stuff while these puppets are like singing in his car and I'm like oh my god I'd have ripped my ears off however I think the most brutal one out of them all has to be when he had to paint over the little kids paintings in the painting class and the reason that this one was so hard to watch on so many levels is because number one it was actually meant to be a challenge and Q basically refused to paint over the kids pictures and so they changed it to a punishment they were like well no you need to do it and that just made it so brutal right oh my god and number two the fact that one of the kids tried to stop him from doing it they were like oh please don't paint over my picture and he did it anyway and it was just oh my god I could never do that I would literally die some of the punishments on this show have been absolutely brutal and he gets like a lot of the brutal ones and the fact he just takes them on the chin shows how iconic he is king behaviour like a boss now next up we have Ma who has been made to do the second most amount of punishments and now although he hasn't been made to do the most amount of them I think as a society we can all agree this poor man this poor man has been put through some of the most awful punishments a human being can be put through and now we'll get on to his punishments in a wee minute right but I just wanted to give a shout out to one of my favourite challenge moments from Ma they're doing like that kind of group challenge where they're all sitting in the waiting room he keeps like riding in and out of the waiting room on this like little suitcase 
electric bike thing and it's the fact it does it with such a straight face and it's so funny and so iconic and I just I love him so much right? oh my god however the moment we've all been waiting for right here are the punishments that I think are the most iconic that my poor guy Ma has had to endure of course we've got the one where they threw him out the plane knowing that it was his biggest fear there's also the punishment where Ma basically had to give like a presentation on climate change and every time he would go behind this table the guys would come running and do stuff to his leg like they would like cut his trousers they would wax his legs they put high heels on him and there's the time they made him swim with actual sharks there's the punishment where they made him get a catheter and then use a zip line with the catheter still in like oh my god there's also the time where he had to sit in a meeting for the hellfire website that is tumblr and shout like a boss for like the entire duration of the meeting however i think the best punishment the moth has ever had in my opinion i know it's not the worst but it's my personal favorite is the one where they shaved his head and then shaved his eyebrows and then they made him get his driving license picture took and he had to just keep it like that until it expired it is so iconic oh my god Ma, what an absolute icon you poor man stick your hard i'm the hard one i'll show you hard I will show you hard! Now, finally, the winner, the man who has had the most punishments out of all of the impractical jokers, our King Sal. He's got so many iconic moments, like even the fact like he just laughs at everything and falls over. Some of the most iconic Sal challenge moments include, but are not limited to, the time that he dabbed all over the supermarket, the time that he danced and showed us the double dutch, the challenge where he was angry about stamps being highly priced. I am going to freak out on you. And of course, we can't forget when they done the challenge in Ikea and the guys kept putting up that iconic picture of Sal all over the department and don't worry we'll get onto that god of the image a bit later in the video. However Sal's punishments are also some of the most iconic and funniest of the entire show and some of my personal favourites include the punishment where mom married Sal's sister and Sal was tied up and made to watch the entire thing take place, the punishment where they put Sal in a cage at the zoo and made him give chicken to bells, the punishment where the guys hid Sal's phone within trash knowing that he's a huge germaphobe and he had to basically sort through the trash to try and find his phone. Also another favourite of mine is the bingo one where he had to basically just keep shouting out bingo and he got kicked out because he annoyed everybody that much. However the Sal punishment that I love so much and it's probably one of my favourite punishments of all time of any of the four guys is the one where they made my poor guy sit in a room full of people listening to passages of books being read aloud and while everybody was sitting listening to this Sal's phone would constantly ring. However he wasn't allowed to turn the phone off or put it on side that was part of the punishment and everyone in the room was getting frustrated and pissed off with him. It got to the point where one person in the room was so angry that she came over and turned his phone off which he was then told to turn back on. When it kept ringing she actually took his phone out of the room. However the best part of the punishment was the ringtone itself which was just the guy singing whose phone is ringing mine mine is so iconic. And final time! <laughs> Of the Impractical Jokers like cinematic universe, the show is the main part of the franchise. However, the guys have also ventured out and have done other things with the Impractical Jokers brand. Now, of course, as the guys are comedians, they would do tours and would produce giggles all around the world. However, they took this to the next level by actually putting on their own cruise. Now, the first cruise that the guys put on was in January of 2016. And from what I could find, it ran every year and was maybe disrupted due to COVID in 2021. However, the last cruise that went went on was in January of 2024 which was this year and I am devastated that I missed out on it. I missed out on this godsend of an opportunity because I was just so ignorant and didn't know what was happening. I thought they stopped the cruise. I thought they stopped doing it. There was a bunch of different entertainers on board as well so it wasn't just the Impractical Jokers, there was like other comedians and stuff like that and also different activities on board as well. Now on the website for the 2024 cruise they listed a bunch of different activities including a belly flop competition judged by Sal, poker with Q, a lip sync battle as well as different events with different guest stars as well. The cruise would go from Mr 305, Pitbull himself's homeland of Miami to the Bahamas. However when researching for this I seen that they aren't actually going ahead with a cruise in 2025 so I'm not sure if they're going to continue it maybe going into 2026 if they do by the way I am 100% gone I will be on that cruise mark my words but I'm not sure if they're actually going to continue on with it or not and actually a fun fact is that the 13th episode of season 4 was actually filmed on one of these cruises as well so that's quite iconic now the guys have also had other tv spin-offs including jokers wild impractical jokers inside jokes and impractical jokers dinner party now as well as this the guys actually also brought out a bold game so that you and 
and your homies can play impractical jokes on each other and be little impractical jokers yourselves. However, I think one of the most iconic ventures outside of the show is the Impractical Jokers movie. Now, the movie was released in February of 2020 and I feel as though the movie was our Lord and Saviour's way of sending us a little bit of hope before our society had to deal with, you know, the other event that happened in 2020. Now, the movie, with a budget of $3 million, managed to gain back $10 million, which is very iconic. The movie, to me, like the actual plot of the movie, although it's quite iconic to me because I just love the Impractical Jokers so much, it's quite weird. Like, it's, it's, quite, it's quite a weird plot for a movie and basically I'll give you a little synopsis of it. If you've not seen it and you don't want spoilers for the Impractical Jokers movie then piss off. Now the movie starts with a flashback to the guys when they were younger trying to get into a Paula Abdul concert. However they are unsuccessful in this and get kicked out right and then we flash forward to present time where they meet Paula Abdul in real life and she says she's a big fan of the show Impractical Jokers and gives them some tickets for her show in Miami which again is also coincidentally like where the crew leaves from so I don't know if that has anything to do with that right but they just they love Miami for some reason. However, the guys notice that she only gives them free tickets when there are obviously four of them. I mean, this wouldn't be an issue now. I'm sorry, that, that, that was too far, that was too far. Now, to figure out who was going to get these tickets, the Jokers basically decided they were going to compete in challenges all around America and the loser would not be able to attend the concert. So whoever had the most thumbs down would not be able to attend the concert. So it was like them incorporating the show into the movie, which I thought was a really cool idea. The movie also had a bunch of celebrity guests, including, of course, Paul Abdul, Will Ferrell, as well as Jaden Smith. And what's funny about Jaden Jaden Smith being in this movie is the fact that his whole segment in it is basically Sal showing off his tattoo and then Sal gets another tattoo of Jaden Smith and I won't spoil the ending right if you want to go and watch it and figure out who actually gets to go to the concert or whatever right but that's the premise of the movie and although I think it's quite iconic right not everybody agreed it had a bunch of mixed reviews and I think you know sometimes people don't get art you know some people are fools and don't understand true art when it stares them right in the face you people have no taste whatsoever the Impractical Jokers movie is so good though. If you have the chance to watch it and you just want a little giggle, like, please watch it. It's so funny. Now, although the show has had a huge impact on our society in many ways, I think the biggest impact that it's had is on internet culture. So many memes have developed thanks to this iconic show. So I thought it would be cute to go through the different memes that the show has produced. <laughs> So I think one of the biggest memes to come from the show is this image of our guy Sal. Now this image was taken of Sal when he was out on a night out and has appeared in the show in Practical Jokers a total of seven times which is so incredibly iconic. Now the picture first appeared to us almost as a gift from God in season one episode nine and in this episode the guys basically took this picture and added to the bottom of it employee of the year. However the version of the picture that is most commonly used is this one here that says employee of the month under it which first appeared in season 1 episode 11 which is also the Ikea episode. The internet done what the internet does best and they took this picture of Sal and completely ran with it and this is what created the tonight's big loser meme. Now the meme basically just has that picture of Sal with text above it explaining why he is tonight's big loser. Now an example of this would be Sal did not accept Jesus as his lord and saviour and went straight to hell making him tonight's big loser. Like you get the idea right? <laughs> it's very iconic. Now this meant that not only was this image a meme but the concept of tonight's big loser also became a meme which leads us nicely on to the next segment. Now, although I just said that this phrase, tonight's big loser, was linked to that picture of Sal, it also kind of branched out into its own meme and became a bit of a cultural phenomenon by itself. The format of this meme will usually have a selfie that one of the guys has took with a Snapchat caption written over it. For example, one of my personal favourites, if Sal does not send me $200 in the next 12 minutes, then everyone on this plane will be tonight's big loser. It's just so iconic. Anyway, let's move on. Another way that the show has impacted internet culture is with the average Ma punishment meme on TikTok. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, my guy Ma, compared to the other guys on the show, usually gets the most despicable punishments known to mankind. Now, this idea of Ma getting the worst punishments was picked up by the hell pit that is TikTok, and people began to make videos to bring awareness to the fact that Ma's punishments are so much worse than everyone else's. These posts on TikTok will usually consist of a video of someone me giving a hard time 
time. Or even genuine mob punishments as well have been used for this meme. And it will usually have text above it that will say average mob punishment. However, it isn't just videos. People also just comment average mob punishment on videos of people getting a hard time. Even of most punishments themselves, like people will just comment average mob punishment or most tame mob punishment. Now this kind of meme of mob getting the worst punishments is not like a new thing. It's always kind of been around. Even with Meat Canyon making a video basically taking the piss out of this concept and also taking the piss out of the Tonight's Big Loser concept as well. Now this video was actually so iconic that Q himself, the icon himself, actually shared it on Twitter. Now, another way in which the show has impacted internet culture is through clips of the show going viral on social media platforms such as TikTok. This has even resulted in clips from the show inspiring different TikTok trends as well, such as the clip of Sal saying, my name is Pal and I sell auto parts, and then looking at the camera. And this audio actually inspired the trend of people using the audio to act out different giggle wolfy scenarios and such. Now, another example of a clip that's gone viral, but it's used for a different type of video, so it's not like the audio that's went viral, it's more the clip itself is the video of Sal dancing in that one challenge um, where they had to dance in the mall and people use this clip for a variety of different videos including fan edits, meme edits as well as to show a new iconic song that they'll try to promote like for example if like somebody releases a new song one of their fan pages I guarantee will use that clip of Sal like dancing to show how iconic the song is. Now another way in which these clips go viral on TikTok specifically is that there's different Impractical Jokers TikTok accounts that post different Impractical Jokers clips and they aren't official at all like they're just different pages that post different clips of the show and these accounts are extremely popular as well which adds to the cultural impact that these clips have on internet culture but also you know like they, they've done it with Family Guy, they've done it with South Park, they've done it with Impractical Jokers as well you know their videos where it'll be like the gameplay below the clip they date with Impractical Jokers as well <laughs> Now the last impact that this godsend of a show has had on internet culture is the fan edits that have been created for the guys on social media platforms but especially on TikTok. I'm not sure if it's just my for you page that's absolutely filled with these by the way. It genuinely could be because I'm a pure degenerate. So I kind of split them into different categories but I think the main ones you get are like the ones that are made for laughs, like the ones that are made for the giggles you know, and then the edits that are made to show how incredibly yummy they really are. But again I don't know if it's just my for you page that's like that because let's, let's be for real it probably is. <laughs> Now, I wish this next section of the video didn't need to exist. Like, I genuinely do. Like, I wish that I didn't have to talk about this. But unfortunately, this is the reality in which we live in. The reality in which Joe Gatto has left Impractical Jokers. On the 31st of December 2021, all society was left absolutely devastated, absolutely heartbroken, as our king Joe Gatto announced that he was leaving Impractical Jokers and that he wouldn't be returning for the ninth season of the show. And the reason that he left was because he wanted to focus on his family. And he also said that he had no hard feelings feelings against the show and I'm glad that he'd done what was best for him. However, the show did continue on without Joe and is currently airing its 10th season which started in February of 2024. You may be wondering what they done in the absence of Joe, did they replace him, like what did they do? So they were talking about how they were maybe going to replace him but Sal spoke about in an interview how that person would kind of be shunned automatically because they're not Joe and no one will ever be Joe Gatto, like that man is one of a kind. So to replace the absence of the icon that is Joe, the Jokers include a different guest to help with the punishments in every episode and some of these guest stars include Kesha, Post Malone, Paula Abdul. However, my favourite guest star that they've had since Joel left has to be the icon, the bald king that is David Cross. David Cross is like one of my favourite actors of all time. I literally love him so much. However, when the guys and Joel talk about Joel returning to the show, they never fully say never to him returning. It's just that he won't be on for the time being. So it's not that they're like he's never returning and that's it. It's like the doors open to him, it's just whenever he wants to come back, he can come back. However, a cute kind of positive note to end this segment of the video on is that they're all still great friends, of course, right? They've been friends since they were in school, like, of course they are. They're still good homies, and Joe's even made an appearance at one of the guys' live shows as a guest. So with that being said, I do think there is a big chance that he will return. Even if it isn't for like a full season, I think even just as like a guest on a couple of episodes, like to help with the punishments, like the way that other celebrities have done, I can genuinely see him coming back and maybe doing that but for the time being though he's not going to be on the show. I'm glad that he's happy and I'm glad that he put himself and his children first so you know that's what's important. <laughs>
If there was anything that I would hope that people would take away from this video, it's just that this show is so special to me and to so many other people. It started as a show that was made by a group of friends for some giggles and it's turned into something that has impacted so many people's lives. As cringe as that sounds, I know. It shows that comedy truly is so special for our society and the impact that the show has had on not only people's personal lives but on internet culture as a whole proves why it is an absolute godsend of a show.